Good. Good for you. Now, when you started your own brand in 2014, what were your expectations then when you got into the business of fashion? So during that time, I, okay, let me like backtrack a little bit. So in 2012, before I started my own brand, I went to FIT that had just started uh -huh. a program for sustainable design. Mm -hmm. And during that time, I had been living in New York. I had been already just kind of like in the industry working, you know, for various like brands and just really like getting to know how the business works right. um, on like that type of level and not just like me sewing at home. Um, and I would say I became very like discouraged, I guess, just with fashion and, and it, you know, obviously it can be very um, shallow. Like, you know, you mentioned it's it definitely, and that's not why I got into fashion. Like, of course I love, you know, the, the beautiful pieces and um, right. the art, you know, as an art, I really appreciate it, but I felt like, I was getting pushed into this direction that like I didn't see myself in. So that's when I made the decision around that time to move back to Arizona. And because there's not much going on here fashion wise, I thought at the time, like maybe I can just pursue this, my brand and put it, you know, get it into stores and have that just be like my, you know, sole like income. Mm -hmm. Um, Unfortunately, it hasn't worked that way. I still have like a day job, um, but, and I always have, but um, it, you know, and it took a while just to like get things off the ground, even though I had been, you know, sewing and designing previously. I think for one, um, you know, Instagram, like it was all very new. So it was a good way for me to like put things out there, but it wasn't like how it is now where there's like, a shop. I mean, you can click right. on a link and it sends you right to like the product. Lot of shopping. Exactly. So um, it was definitely a different time. And I think a lot of people were still kind of like, oh, but like, are you designing with your cousin still? So mm -hmm. it took me a while just to kind of like even separate myself right. from, and, and not that I was like trying to separate myself completely, but like just to, you know, get it out there that like, nope, I'm on my own now. And this is like a new thing. So mm -hmm. Um, that I would say even, you know, took a little bit while uh, of a while for people to like, kind of, um, understand that concept. So yeah, my idea was like, okay, I got this, I'm just going to sew. And, you know, I didn't know if I was going to be doing like made to order or if I was just making like small batches and I was going to be selling those. Like I, I was still kind of trying to see. Uh, no what yeah like what works and i feel like i have tried um now different things and have worked you know in like right. different environments um where unfortunately or maybe fortunately i'm not sure but i um you know decided like okay maybe this is not the direction that i want to go in i'm gonna like shift gears and i'm gonna go in you know this direction and maybe this will work better for me um as a small brand so I think there's been a lot of kind of having to like reinvent and having to figure it out. And um, like I said, for me, I, I'm always going to create no matter what like capacity it's mm -hmm. in. So giving up was never like, it's never been an option for me. So, or just being like, no, I'm not going to do this anymore. Um, even when, you know, there's been times when it's just, it's been really hard and um, even just to like make the initial investment, because for me, it's like, investing in the fabrics, investing my time, mm -hmm. um, and, you know, hoping that it's going to pay off. So that's, um, you know, always kind of challenging. And I think it's why I've still like kept my day job because it gives me that security where like, okay, I, I can just create because I enjoy it as opposed to like, okay, I have to just kind of like pump things out because I need to like, you know, I always say like the bills never stop. And so oh, no, bro. <laughs> yeah, so, no, so I no. have to like stay ahead. <laughs> yes. A lot of people who are not like in the business of fashion, it doesn't matter if you're a designer, a stylist, an interior a pattern maker, PR, whatever sector you are, there are so many inner workings of 
just running a business in fashion. One of my friends, she is not in the fashion industry, like, which I'm fine with. But she came to my office. She was just like, this is what you have to do? I'm like, yeah, girl, what you thought? I just, like, put together a look and, like, that's it? Like, no, I need to have, like, 25 different shoes. I need to mm -hmm. have, like, you're putting a look together for a person and you don't know which way they're going, especially if you just met them for like two weeks and they known themselves for a whole, their whole entire life. So, I mean, I'm the person that is, you know, put, curating a look together, but at the same time, like you need to have different options so that they feel comfortable and maybe they want to make these little tweaks. And if I don't have it on the spot, they're not going to be able to visualize. A lot of people are not visual. And then I'm going to have to spend more time running out, searching it, and then coordinating another. Like, it's just a lot. So, yeah, people on the outside who are not in the fashion industry and just kind of just look like there's a lot of steps that go into, you know, just being in the business of fashion. I literally, like, just reworked my – well, I didn't just rework my business plan, but I'm putting it in full execution mode. So that's why mm -hmm. I'm, like, tired. But – the accomplishments I've been getting from this new change in my new target audience, which is professionals, and then secondary is direct to consumer fashion brands, has just been like very, very rewarding. So mm -hmm. definitely Great. knowing your direction, it will save you time, money, and kind of just keep it. You would just have a ton of vision. Yes, and and that's what I mean. Like sometimes you do have to just cut out like what you know all the outside i guess uh suggestions and really follow like right. your instinct and you know what you and at the end of the day like if it doesn't work out it's like okay well that's on you you tried it and it's again time to like just shift and and, and do things right. a little bit differently yeah you gotta see what is actually like corresponding with your business so exactly it's a lot but